Microsoft has made a lot of questionable decisions over the past three console generations. Microsoft's mistakes have led to consequences such as the Red Ring of Death, the notoriously fumbled Xbox One reveal, and most recently the collapsing market for the Xbox series. However, even more recently, Microsoft made the controversial decision to start porting its games to the Sony PlayStation 5. To put it mildly, this has divided the fanbase. You have Xbox fanboys which react with revulsion. They're Xbox guys, and they feel like it's an insult to have their precious exclusives wash ashore of the dirty Sony console. Then you have the gaming press, which seems to think that it's the greatest thing because it opens up the former Xbox exclusives to a wider audience. And that may be true, but it isn't the smartest thing to do for Microsoft for a number of complicated reasons. So let's dive into those reasons and start boring the shit out of everyone. Microsoft has had, for a very long time, the strategy of making their Xbox exclusives available on the PC market. This, in a way, makes sense because Microsoft dominates the PC market in the form of Windows, and recently Xbox games have been trickling on the Sony's PlayStation consoles as well. Microsoft is a publicly traded company. This means that there is a board of directors, which is beholden to no one other than stockholders. Stockholders like money, and by extension to that, board members like money as well. Any publicly traded company is beholden to the purse strings of the investors. Here's the problem with this structure. Investors are mostly dumbasses, or at least are only interested in short-term profits. To understand why, we have to look at the console market, how it works, and to do this, let's take a look at Microsoft's biggest rival, Sony. Sony created and sells the PlayStation 5. The machine cost $500 and is either sold at a small loss or at a break-even pricing. Sony essentially subsidizes their hardware in order to make it more attractive purchase for gamers. For the sake of this argument, let's assume that we have break-even pricing, so the actual sale of the console is of no financial value to Sony. Where Sony actually makes its money is through game sales. Sony has its first-party and third-party games. First-party games are made by Sony, and it's published for its own console. And third-party games are made by other developers for the PlayStation. While Sony is able to take all of the profits of its first-party games, because after all they did develop them, they can still take a bit of the third-party profits as well. How big that bit is largely negotiated case by case. Let's assume 20%. This means that every game sold on the PlayStation 5 generates Sony some revenue, whether they developed it or not. But what role do exclusives play in this? While it would be nice if every exclusive generated significant profit, that isn't necessarily the goal of exclusives. Exclusives invest people in the console and sell the console. The more consoles that sell, the greater market share there is for the PlayStation 5 games as a whole exclusive sell expensive consoles. Spider-Man 2 and the PlayStation 5 reportedly cost $315 million to develop. That is a staggering amount of money, and with sales of about $11 million at a $70 price tag, it did generate a profit. But its true value is what it brought to the PlayStation 5 in terms of hardware units it moved. It was a big hit, and undoubtedly motivated many people to buy PlayStation 5s. This opened a larger consumer base towards buying more PlayStation 5 games, generating a long-term profit as opposed to the one-time profit Sony got through the sale of the Spider-Man game itself. While Sony does eventually port some of their games to PC, this tends to be after more than a year on the market, when the game no longer moves new console sales. So what is Microsoft doing differently? They're selling their games on multiple platforms immediately. Starfield came to the Xbox Series, it also came to PC on the same day. Since I have a PC, that's where I bought it. Microsoft got my $60, but only my $60. They did not rope me into purchasing their Xbox, and future game purchases I make funnel no money into Microsoft coffers. Sure, Microsoft may have made a larger profit on the game itself, but it did so at the cost of long-term sustainability and profitability of the Xbox brand. 
And here is how it relates to the investors. As I said before, they're all dumbasses. They want to see that green. They don't care how they get it. They want to see it quickly and in a simple manner. And it's easy to look at the balance sheet of a Halo game and take the sales numbers, subtract the cost, and determine how profitable it was. It's much harder to take into account how many consoles that sold and how many additional purchases were made on that console. It's simply too complex for the simple investor to understand. Microsoft's board of directors has turned the corporation into a fidgety child with ADHD. They want their money, and they want it now, sustainability be damned. Then there's Game Pass. Holy hell, Game Pass. That's a whole different can of worms I don't want to get into now. Here's the thing that really bothers me. This stupid strategy will actually work for Microsoft. In the wrong way, but it will work. They'll see good quarters. The fiscal years when they have their games released will be good fiscal years. They will draw profit, if at all costs. But there is a reason the Xbox Series S and X is performing so poorly compared to the PlayStation 5. And it isn't because the games aren't any good. Microsoft actually has a few good exclusives that would drive me to buy an Xbox. But I'm buying them on PC, and now I may buy them on the PlayStation 5. Microsoft is getting my money, but not as much as they would if their market strategy wasn't created for the investor equivalent of a hyperactive toddler.